This is like my favorite dagger of a few daggers. Look at it, it's so pretty. Look at the sheath. I love it. I've had it for a long time, so it's a little bit scuffed up, but, but I mean, listen to what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, I am wearing a cloak today. I'm trying to get into, the, like, the mood for this book. So I did wear a cloak, but also, like, I was too lazy to wear anything else besides a cloak, so now I just look goofy. But who cares? We're here to review Down Comes the Night. I've been trying to figure out ways that I can maybe be just a smidge more relevant, and so I went looking for books that interested me that were published more recently. I don't know if this one, I think this one was published at the very beginning of this year or the very end of last year. And it looked so intriguing. The synopsis? Ah. Ren Sutherland's reckless use of magic has cost her everything. She's been dismissed from the Queen's Guard and separated from her best friend, the girl she loves. So when a letter arrives from a reclusive lord asking Ren to come to his estate, Callwick Hall, to cure his servant of a mysterious illness, she seizes her chance to redeem herself. The mansion is crumbling, icy winds haunt the caved-in halls, and her eccentric host forbids her from leaving her room after dark. Worse, Ren's patient isn't a servant at all, but Hal Cavendish, the infamous Reaper of Vesria, and her kingdom's sworn enemy. Hal also came to Callwick Hall for redemption, but the secrets in the estate may lead to both their deaths. With sinister forces at work, Ren and Hal realize they have to join together if they have any hope of saving their kingdoms. But as Ren circles closer to the nefarious truth behind Hal's illness, they realize they have no escape from the monsters within the mansion. All they have is each other, and that startling desire could be their downfall. Okay, but like, how good does that sound? You guys know I love stories where characters are trapped somewhere by weather or circumstance, and so like, oh, I was so hyped for this. But did it let me down? Let's, let's find out. There might be some spoilers in this one because I go pretty in depth with my notes here. I will have this video labeled, obviously, with what level of spoilers. So I kind of took notes as I went, and you can kind of see my mood changing as we go. I started out very hyped and I went slowly downward from there. This book was not unlike the demon Crawley who didn't so much fall as saunter in a vaguely downward direction. So when I started out I was feeling bright, I was feeling cheery. I noted right away that the style, at least at the beginning, kind of reminded me of my own style and I was like this gives me hope that there is a right fit for my books, that somebody will like my style and want to publish it. I was feeling encouraged, dear viewers. I did think the beginning went on a smidge too long. I do understand what the author was doing and I do appreciate it. The beginning did a really good job of letting me get to know the characters and making me understand why they make the choices that they make. It's not just a beginning that shoves the main character along into this situation. You understand how she gets into this situation and why she makes the decisions that she does. However, it did go on just a little bit too long. She ends up going back to, like, a convent where she was raised, and that whole sequence doesn't need to be there. That could have been cut out, and we still would have completely understood her motivation. In fact, they could have replaced that and given us some sort of interaction with Hal, the guy that she has to interact with when she gets to the mansion. All we get from her with Hal is a memory of seeing him on the battlefield kicking ass. And that's it, like one little memory is all we have to go on. And I would have actually liked to have maybe wallowed in that memory a bit more, got a deeper vision of what that was like. But I do say that the author is very interested in showing us why characters make the choices that they do, and I appreciate that. Again, at least at the beginning. <laughs> At first, I really didn't like the main character and her girlfriend together. They're not technically a couple, but they're a couple, you know? But the girlfriend best friend, girlfriend character is the stoic, stony, I never share my emotions type. And at first I was like, uh, she's a little bit too much that. But then she does like show her softer side later on. And then I was like, oh, no, 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 I ship it, I ship it. I also really liked the main character, again, at least in the beginning, because she's a healer and she uses her magic to heal people. People in this world have magic, by the way. Some people do. That's part of the, like, the big plot is some people have magic and some people don't. It's sort of a Victorian fantasy world. Best I can tell, anyway. 
way by the level of technology we're dealing with, sort of Victorian area, and people just kind of have magic as a matter of course. Anyway, she has healing magic, and she is a big old softy who just cannot stop herself from helping people, and I really like that. You get so tired of reading about Krabby Pantses, and sometimes you just want to hear about a real softy. She's still incredibly impulsive and does whatever her heart tells her, but it's usually out of kindness. And I like that she wanted softness and affirmation from her partner. She craved being told that she was loved. And that's totally an understandable thing. Like I said, magic is a big part of this story, and I do wish that it had been better fleshed out. The main character talks a little bit about, like, why they have magic and who has magic, but then it kind of contradicts itself later on in the book. So I could have used maybe like a few more rules. So she goes to the mansion and she discovers that the person that she's been brought there to help is Hal, who is a war criminal. He killed a lot of people. And also, I was really hoping that he was going to be interesting. But he is the sad emo boy trope. You've seen him a million times. He's been done to death. I was so disappointed with how sort of interesting the main character started out that Hal was so predictable as a character. He does he never does a single thing that surprises me. He's just like every other sort of badass sad boy in every YA book ever. Of course, her host in this mansion where she is trapped is high key high key suspicious and it does make the main character look a little bit unintelligent that she doesn't pick up on that until like much later on but as a reader you're like no no he is sus he is sus as hell this book also has quite a bit of politics going on I don't like politics in a book, so I was bored by these. These were not the politics that were going to make me suddenly be interested in politics in, in your fantasy world. But maybe if you like a book with a little politics in it, there's not a ton, but there definitely is some, and it is part of the plot. Maybe this would be the book for you. The author of this book, I don't know if she like is a nurse or something, but she loves to show off her knowledge of medical terms. She likes just throwing those out there. Like, yeah, I know, I know big words. It was a little bit weird sometimes where it's like, why are you throwing these words at me? Like, I know that your character is knowledgeable. I get that. There also doesn't seem to be a lot of development, in my opinion, of how magic, especially healing magic, has like changed this world because like if so many people have magic and healing magic as long as you're not dead a good healing mage can pretty much save you even though Hal is still like dying of mystery disease while she tries to figure it out she can stop like all of his symptoms at least or at least some of his symptoms she can slow it way down so the healer the healing in this world is like a very big deal, but the world doesn't actually seem all that different from like our world culturally. And I feel like it would be if there were such powerful mages around. Because of the category of this book as YA, of course the characters are like 17 and 19 or something like that, and I just... They try to make up for it by being like, well, children go into the army very, very young in this world, like preteen they go into the army, but it's still, it's just, these characters seem like older adults, in their 20s at least. So I, I think it's just that crutch of category again. You guys know I hate it, where if you want to write YA for some reason your characters have to be teenagers. I hate it. I hate it so much. The writing in this book reminded me a lot of fanfic, like in a good way. Of course there's bad fanfic, but there are also qualities to fanfic that make it very readable and very enjoyable. And at least at the beginning half of this book, that quality was like good for me. But either it started to fade or it started to not be as nice as the book went on. I'm not sure which. I would bet money that this author has written fanfic. I really wish that Hal had more to do, especially near the beginning when he's still very pathetic. Now I'm here for big tough guys being rendered pathetic. Like that's, I'm okay with that. And he was you know, suitably pathetic for quite some time. However, I did wish that he could 
get a little bit more characterization by having a little bit more of a hand in saving himself. Because she can kind of reduce his symptoms, I would have liked it if he was helping her trying to solve what was going on. Because clearly there was something bigger going on, she was trying to solve the mystery, and mostly he just laid around in bed and then sometimes she came over and like sassed him for a while and he sassed her back and she was kind of an ass to him. He doesn't really have any hand in saving himself. And instead, partway through, this servant named Hannah just shows up and is all of a sudden 1000% on board to be the main character's like best friend and assistant. And I did not like that, and I did not like that character because it just seemed like she should have been skipped and Hal should have been doing it. Now this is something that doesn't normally bother me. Of course I listen to the audiobook. You guys know I'm a huge audiobook stan. And usually the narrator of an audiobook does not affect my enjoyment. I can enjoy a book even with a less than stellar narrator. But in this one, the narrator was doing accents, and the accent she gave to Hal, who is the love interest, I hated it. It was like a weird hybrid of sort of vaguely Scottish and vaguely Russian, which sucks because Hal is a main character, so I got to hear it all the time. <laughs> So this is a bit of a spoiler, but I think anybody can figure this out. Main character goes to this house, finds Hal, trying to diagnose his weird mystery illness, and I'm sitting here going, he was poisoned. He's poisoned. It's poison. It's not a virus or a bacteria. It's poison. And of course she eventually figures that out, but I'm like, why did not she, a trained healer, think of that much sooner? Especially, especially especially because the land that she goes into, where this mansion is located, the people there are known to grow poison gardens. It's part of their culture, so why, why? Like, we see her enjoying exploring a poison garden before she gets to the mansion, and still she doesn't think of poison for such a long time. Also, also, after she figures out that it's poison and she makes a cure, neither she nor Hal seem at all remotely worried about being poisoned again. You know, you two know that poison isn't like a virus. Once you, like, have the antidote, you can be re-poisoned. And, like, wouldn't they worry that maybe she didn't have enough antidote? Or what if they couldn't get to the antidote? Not to mention it's just not pleasant being poisoned until you take the antidote. So why were they not even concerned about their food, their drink, everything was fine. No concern about being poisoned again. Toward the middle of the book, things start to get too mushy, romancy, and I just wasn't here for it. What I was really hoping for, even though I knew I probably wasn't going to get it, is that the main character would just be a lesbian, and so she would have to say goodbye to her girlfriend at the beginning, and then she would form a really cool friendship with Hal, but not a romance. But of course it has to be a romance with the broody bad boy. And it just, it finally got deep into that girl broody bad boy dynamic sort of in the middle of the book, and I just, it really started to go downhill for me there. Now after a while, the main character gets away from the mansion with Hal, and she reunites with her girlfriend, and after some shenanigans, they're all working together. Cool, whatever. But the thing is that both these girls, especially our main character, are extremely forgiving of Hal, who is a war criminal and mass murderer. He didn't just kill people. His magic is such that if he looks at people, they drop dead. So he used to walk around the battlefield, like, nuking whole armies by just looking at them. But the girls are like, oh no, he's good now! And I'm like, yeah, but he killed so many of your countrymen. So many. And that's, like, never really addressed. He just feels bad about it. He feels bad that he kills all those people, you guys! He's a good guy now. And I was just like, we are very chill with this mass murdering war criminal because he says he's sorry. Now the book really smashed its face into a wall once we finally kind of get the answer of what's going on, what's the plot, what are the villains up to. It... I hate to say this, but this is one of the dumbest plots I have ever heard in my life. So many things didn't make sense. The reason that she was at the mansion, the reason that Hal was at the mansion, like, tenuous at best. If you try to dig any deeper, you can poke a million holes in all of this. It is so contrived and questionable. And of course we've got villains that are just mwahaha, I'm evil, and there's 
one villain who kind of gets a redemption, but it comes the fuck out of nowhere because it was not even slightly foreshadowed beforehand. And there is a place where you could foreshadow it. And I was ready for the author to do that, and she didn't. I'm just gonna read what I wrote. I know this is YA, but the author clearly does not trust her readers. She does a fine job of showing, especially with character stuff, then has to clunkily tell us all about it. It's the it's the showing and then telling thing over again, which you guys know I hate. When the author does a great job of showing you something and then feels the need to explain it to you. It was so bad that she even explained the main character's arc. When she got to the end of her arc and the book was like, okay, let me just tell you all about her emotional arc right now and why it's come full circle. And I was like, how dumb do you think I am? I know it's for YA readers and you do maybe have to explain a little bit more in YA, I understand that, but we could completely, completely understand the main character's arc without it being spoon-fed to us directly. And my final note, and this is kind of spoilery as well, this is like the biggest spoiler I think, so if you want to skip this one, I'll put a spoiler warning up and then it'll go away when I'm done, but okay. So, the eye transplant doesn't make any sense. The bad guy wants to steal Hal's eyes because Hal's eyes allow him to murder people, and the bad guy is obsessed with getting magic for himself. Now, earlier in the book, the main character explained that magic is genetic, and it, it's kind of all over your body. You can't, you'd have to transplant someone's entire nervous system into another person, for example. But for some reason, Hal because his magic comes out through his eyes, if you stole his eyes, you would get his magic. And that doesn't make any sense with anything we've previously set up. Why would the eye transplant work? How would it work? I think it would have been really interesting if the main character was like, it won't work, and the bad guy was like, do it anyway. But no, it's like, no, if we give this bad guy Hal's eyeballs, he will definitely be able to use Hal's magic. It made no fucking sense. Okay, and on that weird ending note, here we are. A book that started out like it was gonna be maybe my next five star, and in the end, I gave it two stars, more like one and a half, kind of. I was kind of feeling merciful that day because I liked the beginning and the premise so much, but honestly, it really is kind of a one star from me. And that is so disappointing because I was so ready for it to be good. But have you read Down Comes the Night? It is reviewing fairly well on Goodreads, so lots of people do like it, even if I didn't. I have lots and lots of other book reviews here on this channel, so feel free to wander around and check all of them out because I do two videos every friggin' week, and I have been for years, so there's so much here on the channel for you to go back and watch if you're interested. All in convenient playlists for ease of your binging. And if you can't get enough, even then, I have a Patreon where you can support me in publishing my own books, and also get access to exclusive content not seen here on the regular channel. Speaking of my own books, if you want to read a different fantasy romance besides Down Comes the Night, you can check out my book, The Wolf and the Hawk, as I mentioned, fantasy romance, so if you like a little kissing and a little killing, this might be the one for you. All the links to my social media are down in the doobly-doo for ease of your clicking, and I will see you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! Okay, so I'm pretty sure you've seen lots of cool things in your life, but nothing nearly as cool as my patrons. Like Belle, Patrick, Anne Sophie, Callison, Ray, Artemis, Shelby, Zaire, Jesper, Irene, Scribbling Cat, Savvy, Jenny, Amanda, Lisa, Sarah, Anna W, Anna C, Light Julie, OS, Hidden Glade, Persephone, Kit, and Lennox. Like, how could you possibly have seen anything as cool as that? You haven't. Come, little children, I'll take thee away into a land of enchantment. Come, little children, the time's come.